Skedonka Force, welcome back to the Watch It with McQueen Channel, man. Yes, sir, we are back, man. I hope you guys are having an excellent day today, man. man let me just tell y'all this, okay? I love my people down in good old Texas, right? I love anybody who was part of the Aqua Force and happens to live in Texas. I really do. So, with that being said, I hate Texas. Do not ever invite me there. Ever again. That has got to be the driest place that I have ever been to in my entire life, okay? I'm saying the moment I stepped off the plane, my health bar took 20% damage. My aura decreased so fast the moment I even got there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? Y'all don't got nothing going on out there. Regardless, though, I love anybody who lives there. You guys are definitely very great people. Great Southern hospitality. That's always great. No offense. You're probably still going to take offense. But Texas is dry as hell. I just came back from a trip. Was supposed to go over there and film a video. It didn't end up working out for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? We're back, you know? And we have a very crazy video here today, man. You guys might have seen this video looming around the internet, okay? It's very controversial. I guess a girl got caught cheating in the middle of a game, okay? This is a couple that they used to date. A lot of controversial things happened. So let's go ahead and see what went down. This is a $30,000 watch on my wrist right now. And I'm gonna keep showing it to you every single day because I spent a lot of money on it. So you can either allow me to keep showing it to you every single day and put it in your face, or you can allow me to teach you how to do the same exact thing. You could be also making thousands of dollars and have financial freedom every single month off of social media if you had somebody giving you the right instructions in the right game. For the price of an Uber Eats order, I can do that. And I can give you one-on-one -on -one coaching and give you everything you need to know so you guys can do the same thing and get your own bus down Rolex and make so much money that you can invest in whatever you want and live the life that you want. Click the first link in the description. The price is about to go up soon because I'm giving way too much valuable game that I shouldn't be giving you for this low of a price. So click the first link in the description and join my community and I'll give you the best experience ever. Let's get some money. Click the first link in the description. Please read it. Search your name in the other person's messages. Oh, God. Do we have to do this? I'll do it. I'll do it. If you, if you don't have to. I'll do it. I'll do it. We getting buzzy. It just always comes at the most, <laughs> at the most, the craziest time. You know, when a girl responds like this, do we have to do this? I mean, you already know what the deal is. You know what the deal is. She's a cheater. <laughs> Damn, look at she, she deleting Sorry. messages. Wait, deleting stuff? Go ahead. We brought together two people to ask unusually intimate questions on a blind date. Okay. Will they fall in love? So these people don't know each other? Hi, my name is Diane. I'm 21. I'm currently a fourth year student at UCLA. My name is Justin Fajardo. I'm 21 years old, and I'm currently a senior at USC. What would you say is like a trigger on a date? I think if they like can't talk to me, I don't mind carrying conversation. But I feel like when I have to do like 90% of the work, that's a sign that we aren't compatible. I feel like it's hard for me to be vulnerable with people sometimes, and with Justin, I feel like I can tell him anything. I met Justin five years ago at a conference for UC Berkeley during high school. At the end of the conference, we had little envelopes and I found a note in it. It said like, hi, it was nice to meet you, and a phone number, and I basically texted the phone number on a limb. So I basically slid in DMs, but physically. <laughs> we just started texting a lot and FaceTiming a lot and just kind of hit it off. We dated for about six months, and then right after that, Things kind of fell apart. So I was still immature, had a lot to learn, and then the way it ended was, it was really messy. I really, really hurt her. We rekindled like my first year of college. Oh, so he cheated. He, he was knocking other hoes. That's exactly what happened. College, and then we also rekindled this year, which is my fourth year of college. I called her. <laughs> Is it me? Can I just not get over my first love? I got out of a relationship a few months ago. Right after that is when me and Justin started talking again. I mean, it's really fun. We went on multiple dates. We're going to date soon. So, yeah, I think situationship is the best way to put it. Where we stand right now is just friends. But just friends that feel emotionally connected and physically attracted to one another. And I was like, okay, well, that doesn't sound like just friends, but yeah, I can do that. How are you feeling? 
I don't. I just so nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so nervous. <laughs> well, hey. I'll be hug. All right. <laughs> what should we drink? So there's tea, but then I do see a lot of other options. This is IPA beer. I like tequila. <laughs> Big shots. Hopefully this tastes good. Well, I feel like I'm gonna make a face when I drink this. Alcohol, alcohol, right? Cheers. now. Cheers. <laughs> Wine with tequila is crazy. Okay. <clears throat> it's a perception box question. Okay. We partnered with unlikely collaborators to incorporate perception box questions which helps our data dig deeper and uncover more meaningful connections. What is something you regret that you failed to do or say in a past relationship? My most recent relationship and what I regret or failed to do was stand up for myself. I just destroyed myself, my whole identity. I cut off all my friends because I was told that for whatever reasons they weren't really my friends. They didn't really care about me. I was told don't talk about your interests, don't talk about this stuff because I don't care. And I let it drag on because if I did that, then the relationship would continue and my partner would be happy and she'd be happy and it happened for a reason and it made me who I am now and it formed boundaries for myself and how to stand up for myself and knowing who I was and form my identity. So I've done a lot of work to figure out what's real and what's not. So yeah, how about um, you? Maintain my friendships while I was in a relationship. What? I prioritize my significant other a lot. I don't know, I was just like tunnel vision on like my partner at the time. Well, and I mean, you should be. You should be, baby. All right? And what friendships are we talking about here? We talking about the other guys you got in line? That's what we talking about? Because you ain't cut off your girlfriends. All right? A lot of y'all girls love to act like you cutting off your girlfriends with the wood. No, you not. I ain't finna hey, cut off my own girls with the wood. Especially since y'all both go to college. No, 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 no. So you talking about oh maintaining no you're mad because you somehow tunnel visioned on on your on your man which you should have been and you're mad because it didn't work out and now the dudes that you had waiting in line you know what I'm saying they was gone but guess what honestly it doesn't even really matter it couldn't have hurt you that much because women are always gonna have simps in line always no matter what they're always gonna have dudes in line always. And then it wasn't until, like, I was outside of the relationship that I realized that, like, I'm not as close to my friends anymore. But it's a lot better now, so I love all my friends. Yeah. So it's D for two. What's the worst thing someone could say about you? You, okay, go. I'll go. you go, yeah. I think if someone were to tell me that, like, I don't know, like, you've had it so easy or that, like, yeah. you didn't work hard... Or especially in college, because, like, I go to UCLA, like, a lot of people come from, like, very affluent backgrounds, privileged backgrounds, and, like, I didn't grow up that way, like, immigrant household, and so when people say that, it's like, yeah. you don't know me. But. The worst thing someone could say about me is, like, why do I care so much? Like, that's something that friends have often told me in an effort to be, like, you know, just let it go. Like, why does it bother you so much? Being in touch with my emotions and emotional intelligence is something I take a lot of pride in. And someone saying, like, why do you care so much? Like, just let it go and move on. While it is objectively good advice, it just pushes them away from me because I realize that they don't really know who I am. Like, it's core to me to care and to be thoughtful. I didn't know that. Your turn. Okay, challenge card. First oh, challenge. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. FaceTime the other person's mom. Oh, it's gotta be mine then because. Oh, yeah, because. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Where's my phone? You can't stop laughing. This is so funny. Oh, she might not pick up. Don't pick up, mom. She knows. She knows. <laughs> okay, let me take a deep breath. Hi, mom. It's a. Okay. Hi, Miss Eats. <laughs> Basically. We got a challenge card, and it says to FaceTime the other person's mom, so that's... Why, Sorry, mom, that's I love you. Justin had, Sorry. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Sorry, mom. 
Like, I love you. Can you see me right now? No, no, no. The cameras can't see you, Mom. They can't see you. It's okay. I'm sick in bed. I know. I know. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. Okay, I love you. Oh. Love you. Bye. <laughs> oh, great. Crazy challenge card. Wild. Insane. When was the last time that you really cried? Okay, for me at least, it was on the FaceTime that we had a few weeks ago, and we had talked about like, oh, what are we? What should we be? And I got really emotional. I think mostly I had decided that we should have ended things. I don't know, I felt really sad that I decided to do that, and I also felt like I didn't express myself in the best way possible. Yeah, I think as I was just like talking about it and like telling you like how I felt about the situation, like um, and like you, I think that's when I got emotional and started crying. <laughs> Last time I really cried, yeah, it was that same situation. It was it was the drive back. We hung out all day, and then I was about to. You walked into my car, and then you got in the car, and you're like, "I got something to tell you." We, we all know what happened, but I felt like I had no say in it. I felt very blindsided and let on at the time, and. That, that's how I feel that it was, but I forgive you now, of course. I was just trying to be stoic, and then as soon as you walked back and I saw you got back into your apartment safely, I just drove off, and yeah, instantly I called my mom, and just, I couldn't, I couldn't even get the words out. She's like, what's wrong? And I just couldn't even tell her. I just started crying, and yeah. I want to jump in. You mentioned that you did Do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I don't care. Okay, I'm just checking with you. Okay. She's, she was coming to town, I think, to see friends or something into LA. Basically, she was gonna have the whole day with her friends, and then the plans were I was gonna pick her up at the beach, and then she was gonna stay the night at my place. We're gonna hang out or whatever, <laughs> and then the next morning, then I would drive her back to her friends. That was the plan. Uh, instead, what happened was. What did you say? I, I didn't feel well. That's yeah, all. Just, I was just upset because there were decisions that I felt Diane could have made that I was like, why didn't you part? Like, you knew you were going to hang out with me, and then I felt disrespected. I had driven all the way out to go pick you up at the beach, and then when I get there, I felt like I was being just, like, handed a burden in a sense, which is, I hate saying it that way, but that's how I felt in the moment. One of your friends told me, like, oh, like, it's okay, like, if you can't take care of her, we can take care of her. And looking back, it was kind of one of those, like, comments of, like, of just being cordial and polite, but assuming I would say, no, 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 I got it. And instead I went, yeah, I, I wasn't ready to take care of her, no. You take care of her. And I left. And I left in a very angry manner. I scared you really badly, which I super regret. And you know that, I have told you. It was horrible of me and how I'd never leave you like that again, so. It's okay. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge card. Oh, uh -huh. oh shit. Please read it. Search your name in the other person's messages. Yeah. Do we have to do this? I'll do it, I'll do it. If you, like, you don't have to do anything. Sure. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, you guys get five more seconds. Okay. She deletes stuff. Damn, look at she, she deleting Sorry, messages. Wait, you deleting stuff? Go ahead. And we're only going to give 10 seconds to look for the other person's phone. No, no. She deletes stuff. Okay. Oh, my. <clears throat> I, why he let her do that for that long? you guys talk. Like here and there. Okay. 
You said it was just him reaching out. Um, I guess kind of both. Are you sure? You don't want to take a few minutes. Why don't you guys talk? Do you want him back? to go forward with the questions. Do you want to go forward with the questions? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Is it my card or your card? That's mine. Okay. okay. Uh, perception box question. What is your most consistent this, man, and... This is the worst position to ever be in. You don't ever want the popper to ever have the ball in her court, bro. You don't. The reason why she was able to sit there, oh, I'm able to go on and move on with questions is because she don't really give a damn. She don't really give a damn. Now, on the other hand, if the man cheated on her in the past, he said he was immature, he hurt her really bad, okay? I'm assuming it's because he cheated. I'm assuming. If it's not that, then that's a whole different story and that's my bad. But let's just venture down the rabbit hole of the fact that he might have cheated. If he cheated and it was established that it was a monogamous relationship in the beginning, then, you know, that's just karma. However, if he didn't cheat, and it was some, some, you know, say just some, st some stuff that, you know, uh, some immature. Maybe it was that situation he was talking about that happened at the beach when he tried to come pick her up with ooh, this, this, okay. And then he finds out this, and she cheated. Then, you know, just another day in the life of a bopper, right? <laughs> it's just another bopper, right? <laughs> but you don't ever want the bopper to ever have the ball in her court. Man, I swear to God, these women, they, they thrive off of the fact that a man cares. They thrive off of that. It's like they live for it. The moment they know you care and the moment they know that they have you in an emotional state over them, you're done. You're done, bro. This is why you can never let a woman have that leverage over you. And how you always make sure that she never has that leverage over you is you stay focused on your purpose. You stay focused, locked in, and aligned with the Lord and the man that he has called you to be. And never take your eyes off of that. Never take your eyes off of the prize. Never take your eyes off of the goal. The girl is behind and the goal is right here. You never take your eyes off of that. Never. Okay? She's got to follow you. She's got to keep adding to you. You know what I'm saying? That's it. If you stop and turn around and start trying to, oh my God, take care of her, you know, and slow down. Oh, baby, let me tend to your knees. That's the moment she's going to go the other way. Okay, I'm trying to tell you, you could never let a woman have this type of leverage over you because not only do they thrive off of this, like they're vampires, dementors from Harry Potter, they will quickly take full advantage of it. Quickly, like I'm saying, like a thief in the night. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks. But you got to understand that the way that the whites have propagated us to believe that how, you know, love is supposed to go down, it's not the way it's supposed to go down, okay? If you really think about it, right, in every single Disney movie, right, you got the prince out here chasing the woman. You know how valuable the prince is? That's a prince. Why is he chasing the low-value woman around? Because just because she's beautiful. Why? Why would that ever be the case? It's all propagate. It's all, it's, all, it's all propaganda. That's why we think that we're supposed to be moving this way, but it never, it never ever works out in the way that we think that it's supposed to go down. It never does because biology doesn't lie, okay? It's a sad game. And greatest fear. I think coming from like an immigrant, low income household, like money was such like a big topic in our house. And especially since I'm graduating, I'm thinking about like, what am I gonna do after graduation? Like I need to have a job. And so I think my most consistent and greatest fear is like not having enough money to like keep myself up on my own feet without having to like rely on other people. Um, but yeah. He cannot get over what he just saw. I understand, and she know it. Okay, we're going to pause right here and um, we're going to take a five minute break.
want to hang out here for a second? You want to come out with us? Okay. Okay. Do we want to keep moving through the questions? The homie is sick. Okay. He's sick to his stomach. Oh, man, this is not a good place to be, bro. Oh! We can understand. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, you guys really need to always remember that if you ever get to a point where a woman can have some type of control over your emotional state, that is a sign that you need to work on yourself even more. You need to become colder. You need to become colder, bro. It sucks, but this is how it is in the modern day. You have to protect yourself no matter what. Because the right woman is just gonna be adding to you. There's gonna be no confusion. She's only going to be supporting you. She's not going to be taking away from you. Forget all that stupid ass stuff that they told you about. Oh yeah, it's a woman. That is, it's, it's, she's supposed to, no, she's not. No, she's not. She's supposed to only be adding to you. If there's ever any confusion, if there's ever any goddamn negativity, if there's ever any of that, she's not for you. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's not. So get that out your goddamn mind. All right. The way that you do not allow a woman to get you so involved to the point where you are, she has control of your emotional state. She can do something, say something. You can see something like this dude just saw that will completely just throw your mood off. The way that you avoid that is you, just, you never take your eyes off your purpose. Never. Because at the end of the day, we're always the more valuable person. Always. No matter what. Because we're expected to lead. We're expected to elevate mentally, spiritually, physically, financially. We're the ones who are expected, you know what I'm saying, to take care, provide, you know what I'm saying, protect, all of that. Just off of those things alone, the intangibles right there that most girls do not have, we are the more valuable person. How are we not? How are we supposed to be all those things, but we are less valuable? That doesn't make any sense. Just off of those things alone, you are already the more valuable entity. You know, all the externals are just addition. You gotta always remember your value, man. It will help you not take your eyes off of the prize. And it will help you respect and protect that person that you know you are deep down. That value that you know and have trained your mind to really realize and understand and live by. And you gotta really get to that point and make sure you protect it with your life, bro. Because the moment a girl can get you to this point, you're slowing down. You're slowing down, you're getting sidetracked. And the woman that you just had, she was able to knock you off your pivot. It makes you realize that you don't have as much trust in yourself as you as you thought you did. You're not as strong as you thought you were. You know, and that's okay. Life is all about progression, but it's just better to get to a point where you could never even let a woman even get you like this, okay? Because they thrive off of that, bro. I'm trying to tell you they thrive off of it because most men are gonna be able to easily be manipulated and fall for them emotionally. When they can't do that to a man, that's when they get super attached. That's when they follow what you say. That's when they're actually doing what they're supposed to do as a woman. That's when they're, you know what I'm saying? That's when all of those, all of a sudden they're in love. Okay? And the only way that you can remain and keep that dynamic is by never taking your eyes off your purpose. Never! To give them some space to gather their thoughts, we let Justin and Diane take a five minute break, then come back to into discuss what transpired. Yeah, that's the question of what greatest fear I was going to touch on it anyways but now no better way to talk about it um yeah fear of not having control over things being abandoned and I uh, being played and well I'm saying this because I care about you about us about my own feelings and emotions and so yeah I'm, I'm hurt I'm really hurt Diane thought I had a grasp on things and I really didn't. The term situationship, it doesn't always have like clear boundaries because it's not like a fully committed relationship. Being exclusive or like not being exclusive until it's stated. And that's what it's like for me. Like if it's not stated, then I'm going to assume that it's not exclusive. She's not wrong about that. I got to be real. She's not wrong about that. If it is as established as a situationship, there's no boundaries, really, okay? I'm messing with you. It's more, it's like a friends with benefits type of thing. We might've had a past before, so you're our number one option, but we still got options on the side, you know? Until we know for a fact that we're only about each other. Me and where I'm going and where I'm at, man, I can't be with just one woman, I can't, bro. 
you know, a woman who's giving me the most value, yeah, she'll get the most attention. She'll get the benefits. She'll reap the benefits of, you know, being with McQueen. But, I mean, you know, as far as, like, being with one woman is just crazy, bro. Why do these women don't deserve that? They don't deserve a man who gets up at 5 a.m. in the morning every single morning. They don't deserve a man who goes to bed at 8.30 to 9.00 p.m. every single night. They don't deserve a man who tracks his calories and hits his macros every single day. They don't deserve a man who reads and upgrades his mind every single day. They don't deserve a man who makes so much money a month every single day. They don't deserve a man who drives the 2024 M4 competition X drive every single month with a, with a goddamn blue rat. They don't deserve the man who's got the $30,000 bust down watch with the goddamn nice ass pinky ring to go with it. Wrist on froze. They don't deserve the man who inspires and impacts people, millions of people, every single day. They don't deserve that. Not only just through laughter, through inspiration, through impact, a completely change that they don't deserve a man who's able to walk around and people lose and gasp, lose their breath as because of the fact that they've seen me. They don't deserve a man like that because of the impact I've had on their lives. You know what I'm saying? They don't deserve a man who was what who has done the inner work, went to therapy for over three years, still training the mind, becoming a master of his own energy. Why in the hell do you deserve that? Just to yourself, just because you're a woman. That doesn't make any sense. You are getting all the benefits. You are upgraded in every single facet of your life being just being around me. And I'm not getting anything out of it. Nothing. Essentially, you're, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> And you want me to you want me to just be exclusive to you? This doesn't even make sense. Okay? And a text that I had read is saying me and Justin are not a situation ship. So What'd you say? Not exclusive. And a text that I had read is saying me and Justin are not a situation ship. So Damn. Damn. So then what do you think this is then? Damn. Like we're not like there's like no full commitment, and so I didn't think it was like something we, you know, had to discuss or I don't know. You said you needed more ambiguity, a little bit more space. I respect that. Well, if we're gonna go with what we had said out loud was, oh, we're just friends. I feel like you would tell a friend what's going on. At times, I feel like I do have those feelings for you, and then at times, I feel like. I don't, I think I haven't felt that spark the past few days. Um, yeah, I could tell. I knew you were distant. And, and so like right now, and that's. <laughs> oh man. The worst possible place to be as a man. They thrive all the, you see how she's smiling? Like, I'm trying to tell you, it's like they get a Zenkai boost when they when they hear these things. When they see a man in this state, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's crazy. And so, like, right now, that's where I'm at. Like, I feel like we have really good conversation, and it's, like, fun, but I don't, that's all I know right now. Okay. And at times, like, I do want to take a step forward, and at times I don't. But it's too, like, uncertain to say. I mean, we rewind back to the whole, you know, you kind of blindsided me with the just friends, and then, okay, I'll get over it, I'll move on. And then three days go by, and suddenly, hey, I need to talk to you. There's some things I left unsaid I need to tell you. Okay, and she needs to tell me this because, right, to give me the reasons that I deserve. And then I hop on the phone call, and it's not that at all. It's... I said everything, I regret the way I said things. I wasn't trying to lead you on. I feel emotionally connected to you. I feel physically attracted to you, but you know, things went too fast. I was overwhelmed. All very valid things, of course, yes. And then we agreed to very like, clear, like, hey, just friends. And then I remember I took a little bit of a step back to see where your energy was, and you were initiating a lot, you know, wanting to hang out. We hung out as friends, it was great. Although with a lack of clear boundaries, it always felt ambiguous. And I was trying to be okay with it. And it's not a label. It's not like, I, oh, I want boyfriend, girlfriend. I want clarity. And this whole just friends thing, no flirting, no intimacy, was pretty clear for a while until it wasn't. And you spend the night in one other's place and, and, the way we've been, and now the past week where we, you know, we bend the rules a little bit. And, but I, I felt like we okay, we're moving towards stage where we need some little more clarity. I mean, you don't bring up Valentine's Day without, 
any intentions, right? <laughs> Nor do I think friends hang out one on one like that. Um, like, Sorry, guys, that's, that's our time. Okay. Diane and Justin ended their day by writing letters to each other, expressing their thoughts and feelings about what happened. The fact that I got out of a relationship not too long ago. I think I feel really confused. Yeah, like I know it hurt him a lot. Like I didn't know this was gonna happen or like I didn't know he was gonna react that way. Um, and so I think I feel surprised, confused. Um, if it wasn't stated that it wasn't exclusive, like it's not exclusive. I just wanted to be validated. You see? You see? They thrive off of that. The part where she said I was surprised really in translation means, oh my God, I, I didn't know he felt that way. It, so now I know that he actually really likes me for real and I know it can actually impact him. Boost her ego. Boost her ego. You know? What, what was the last word she just said too? Like, it's not exclusive. I just wanted to be validated. You just wanted to be validated. That validation. He gave her that validation. I'm trying to tell you the biology don't lie, Aqua Force. God damn it. I mean, it's still fresh, but still taking a breather and taking perspective, taking context, trying to see it in the way a friend would see it. Never had clear boundaries. Just randomly wanted to do that. It was just friends. We never used the term situationship anyways, actually, until recently. And so, and even then it felt more like a joke. It's easier said than done. When a friend is in a situationship, it's easy to remind them, hey, like, you can see other people too. But then when you're the other, per when you're the person involved in it, oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's real hard. And so I guess that was the raw emotion there you saw. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't being as considerate of his feelings as I thought I was. Even though it was a hard conversation to have, I think it was necessary and that without this, like, I think that conversation wouldn't have came. And regardless of the outcome, like, yeah, I'm really grateful that we had talked about what we talked about, what happened. I think right now it's just really bad timing. I'm trying to figure out her feelings, just out of a fresh relationship. I mean, that's so hard. It's something I've been concerned about this entire time. What I do know is a lot more questions, a lot more things need to talk out, of course, in private. What you did technically isn't wrong. It's more the fact that you lied to me that feels wrong. I should be strong, and with anyone else I would be, but then with her, for lack of better terms, she kind of just breaks those down those walls in a way, and I, I will tend to concede, and I know that. So, of course, I'm going to hear her out, hear her side of things, but I, if they don't match, that's where I have to remind myself that then it's okay to let go, but I don't even want to think about that. So, we didn't get to the question of my biggest fear is lack of control, which is life. You don't get to control everything, but it's a fear of mine, and so you got to let go sometimes. So moving forward, yeah, you just... Gotta be super clear with with that and know the expectations each person has. God damn. The beginning of his villain arc, man. This is how it goes. The beginning of the villain arc. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. It's a cold game out here, y'all. It's a cold, freezing, shivering game out here all right below zero it's cold and this is why you got to become cold as a man i mean it's in the bible y'all okay we're supposed to be chasing our purpose as a man if god is telling you not to chase women don't you think you being disrespectful by by chasing women you ever think that you ever think about that chase your purpose it's the only real thing that's going to fulfill you yeah it gets boring but it's the only real thing that's going to fulfill you the benefits that you get from chasing your purpose is the only real thing that is going to fulfill you not these boppers anyways make sure you guys hit the like button make sure you subscribe i'll see you guys next video